I wanted to talk today about recovering from cults and abusive relationships. And this was a request someone sent in. Um, and obviously a big part of what uh, I am doing now is recovering and a big part of what happens after you realize that you are in one and you get out is how do you heal from this? How do you come back? How do you have a a good, healthy, productive life, right? So I'm going to talk about what I've done so far since I've left the cult I was in for 12 years and give you some resources that I've come across on my way, as well as, um, I guess, a couple things that I would caution against. And a big part of this is recognizing that being in a cult, you are not yourself while you're in there. And they talk about it as a pseudo personality or a cult identity or a sort of different persona that you become in order to fit into this group. Um, the reasons for that are that in order to conform to whatever the group's ideals are, who they want you to be, it may be very different from who you actually are. And so if you don't recognize the difference, essentially going to therapy and just work like a normal therapist, like you would, if you weren't in a cult, um, you'll be processing the stuff on your pseudo identity, not you. So the first thing to do, well, the first thing to do is to get out, right? And I'm going to talk about the four phases that Ellie Jenkinson, who did her um, PhD research, research on this topic, uh, and she's actually a therapist who trains therapists on how to work with cult survivors. So I'll link to her work. But the first thing to do is to get out physically and then begin to recover or leave psychologically. Um, but the second part is to deconstruct that difference between the pseudo identity and the real you. And so for instance, this is a concept that's kind of like blowing the minds of, uh, you know, my friends that were in with me as I have conversations and stuff. And they're starting to recognize like, oh my goodness, like I took on a lot of the points of view about who I am from these cult leaders or from being in the group. And, um, and they're not actually true. So, and you can actually buy into these points of view about you and conform to them and change your personality and alter your beliefs and all of that and, and sort of become this like not you version the whole time that you're in the cult. And then when you leave, it's like a matter of deconstructing all of that and sort of figuring out like who is your authentic self. Um, and the mind F about that is that um, in the cult I was in, it was all about being you. It's kind of ironic because they're actually, you know, putting this other thing on you. That's not you while telling you like, we're going to learn how to be you, um, be yourself. So one of the cult identities that they gave me was that I was, uh, really uh, like a, not like a sexual predator, but like a sexual, like a vixen or like a siren or something like I was this like dangerous sexuality that was like walking around like but that it was good it was like this paradox of like you should be using that to get whatever you want and it's really powerful and I was like like I yeah it was so far from where I was functioning when I first came as well as that I was like really mean just really mean and, um, so those were two of the main identities that they put on me that I took on. And I was like living my life, like this is real. And, you know, everyone has a shadow side, everyone has all things, but like, for me to really believe like, this is the core issues that I have that I need to overcome. And that even though like what they would tell you in this reality, it would be wrong to be, um, to use your sexuality to or your sexualness or your abilities, uh, capacities um, to your advantage, but it's actually, that's not true. You should be using them. So it was this real, um, it turns these concepts on their, on their head that you would hear out in the real world and makes them the opposite of what you would hear. And which is confusing and also not an identity that I resonated with before coming to the cult. So I was like, oh, 
And because of the whole dynamic that you are in, because you're being, your, your mind is being altered and you're in sort of a altered mental state and you can watch the other videos for more on that. But because you're in this like not totally present cognitively, not totally aware, not totally, I mean, you're probably like overworked and sleep deprived and malnourished and all these things and being hit, basically hypnotized and all of this stuff. Like you combine everything all together and you're not thinking clearly. And then they tell you this thing and you're like, and you've also put them in this position of authority. Like none of these things work on their own, but you have like layers to all this manipulation. And then you're like, oh, okay. So I have to figure out how that's true about me. Cause it is true. Cause they're in a position of authority. You're going to take on whatever they tell you about yourself. Like it's true and then make it real. And then you live up to that basically. So the, those are two things. It was like, I was, you know, this sexual vixen, the siren person that should be using it, to, you know, to get whatever I want. And then also that I'm like the C word. I'm just a very mean person. And so I was always, and think about that. If you convince someone that they're a very mean person and they don't want to be mean, because I mean, most people don't want to be mean. They're going to go out of their way constantly to prove that they are kind and nice and giving. So it creates a really good worker who's always trying to um, do more and more and more and more and more um, for to please this group and these leaders. I mean, obviously, because I actually am a people pleaser and um, still uncovering how I am not an evil person. Uh, so, and obviously like I've only been out for a year. I'm not saying I'm fully recovered and I'm not a therapist, but I'm giving you some information that I've learned that's helping me to separate what's actually true from what they told me was true about myself. And they would even tell stories about me. Um, this cult would do these sort of like meditative sessions where everyone would lay down and there would be this, you know, sort of ambiance and the guy would walk around and talk about people in the room and he would talk about me and I would be like, oh, like stories about how I grew up and they just literally aren't true. And I was like, wow, he's so psychic. He's so aware. He's like almost like, um, recovered memory stuff where you're working with someone and they're like hypnotizing you and telling you something happened in your past and never happened. Like, and I really bought all of that truth was true. And I was like trying to work out, okay, well, how do I, how do I, um, heal that? But it was never like, none of it was true. So you don't heal something. Cause it's not even, it's not even true. Okay. So there's this idea that you have a cult identity or a pseudo personality. So after you've left for, uh, um, physically from either the abusive relationship or the cult, um, deconstructing the cultic experience, the pseudo personality in order to build a sense of autonomous, authentic self that has to happen before you do normal therapy. So, um, I'm going to talk about some things you can do like for free at home, you know, or very little cost, maybe with books that you could even find at the library, because I know most cult survivors and abuse victims have no money or no reason, like very little money usually because they've given it all to the cult. They've given them all their money, all their time, all their energy, sometimes even their, you know, children and every, like they've given everything to that abusive person or that group. And so you probably, if you're watching this, you're not like have a endless expense account. So, um, some things that you can do that are very low cost, educating yourself. Um, there's a book that I'll link to again, written by Yanya Lalic, uh, Dr. Yanya Lalic, who has just agreed to come on this show. I'm so excited to have her on. I cannot wait to talk to her. Um, she really helped me get out of this group and recover. She wrote a book called take back your life, recovering from cults and abusive relationships. And, um, there's lots of good books out there on recovering from cults, but that is the first one I would start with and then have a look at regulating your nervous system. So these uh, are things you can, you can just Google that, right? Reg How do I regulate my nervous system? We never talked about the nervous system in the group that I was in. And um, they would have poo-pooed or diminished any kind of science uh, about the nervous system 
and anything like that. So it wasn't something that I learned about. And like when you're in a cult hole, you just don't learn stuff that's outside the cult. So um, just recognizing when you're triggered, when you're in a trauma response, when you, uh, when your nervous system is deregulated, um, or dysregulated, whatever that word is, uh, and, and figuring out ways it's going to sound really strange, but, um, so what I learned in, in working with Yanya in her class, the part of your brain that can cognitively think, uh, goes away if you're in a trauma response. So kind of like reptilian, right? Like if you're running from a dinosaur, dinosaur, you're not also doing a crossword puzzle. So the different parts of the brain. So if you are in that like fight or flight, um, that part is being triggered, doing something that brings the other part of your brain online, it like they can't be at the same time. So a couple of things that can help you, um, like literally get a crossword puzzle or Sudoku or even games like um, like Candy Crush or things like that, that make you have to kind of like, like think with that part of your brain and doing that in the moment. I actually, um, I can't remember what I was going to do, but I, right before I went to do that, I looked at, um, some kind of financial, I got some, we have like this massive debt since, you know, we also just got out of cult, cult. we, you know, are in a really bad financial position and it just, tr it like, it took me like out of my body. I kind of dissociated and I was supposed to do something like have a meeting or an interview with someone or anyway, I just sat down and like did a couple boxes on a crossword puzzle. And it like, it fixed that, uh, it flipped me back. It brought me back online is how they would say it. Um, also, uh, you can bring yourself back into your body with, uh, intensity, um, not like hurting yourself, but if you hold an ice cube, um, it's not going to hurt you, but it, it will, it's an intense sensation. And so that will bring you back into your body. So that's another little quick trick. And, um, I also have, yeah, candy crush that I play. These are, sound silly, but they really work. Um, I've also helped, um, a friend of mine who was in a, um, like a, a dissociative state just over the phone, kind of having her describe to me what she sees around her, what she feels with her toes, um, just bringing those sen senses back, um, you know, and, and, and talking about what she was seeing and hearing and feeling like physically, um, help get her back to her body and then hold an ice cube. And then I asked her some questions from a crossword puzzle. So she had to start using that part of her brain, um, and then breathing, right? So just, you know, whatever type of breath work that you want to study, but like just really, um, breathing. So all of that, and I'm sure there's a lot more tips, feel free to comment below about like other ways to regulate your nervous system in the moment if you if you are being triggered. And then there's things that you can do more systemically long-term. Um, I like to unplug from social media because it can be very triggering, obviously. Um, so also basic good health. When you are in a cult, you're probably not doing things like exercising, moving regularly, eating good, healthy, whole food. I'm not going to give you diet advice, but like for me, I realized uh, like in our cult, they would say, all you need is sugar, salt, and water. And then they joked that the other fourth food group was alcohol. So that was the diet that we were on for like a decade. And so when I actually just started eating, um, I actually did the whole, uh, whole 30 which is just about eating actual good, healthy food. So um, eating good, healthy food uh, and going on walks every single day. Um, I went through a bath phase as well. <laughs> so Epsom salt baths um, just really was helpful in a period of time to help calm me. Um, but there were also days where I couldn't just go sit in the bath because I was like too triggered or too... Um, my mind was racing and stuff. So I would have to go for a walk. I used to run, but I actually started walking and I find that much more regulating. So like 30, 40 minutes or an hour. Um, and I just go for a walk bath, um, and eating healthy and getting 
a lot of sleep. Like a lot of colds really push you um, emotionally, physically, like, you know, spiritually all in all ways. And so you probably have maybe if you are like me, you've just been on this like overdrive. You're also usually in a cult out to like some mission that you're going to like save the world in some way. And so there's this pr constant pressure, constant, constant pressure. So just like stopping and allowing, like it's um, really common in cults to feel guilty if you're not productive at all times. And so it's hard for cult survivors to just like stop and do nothing and just rest. So learning, um, relearning that like rest is actually really essential and important and sleep. Like you may need way more sleep uh, when you leave because there's just your body, your brain, everything is really recovering. Also, um, it's important to remember that, well, it's good, good information to know or understand that the chances of going back into another cult, uh, or religious dysfunctional religious group or abusive relationship or whatever it is like is very high if you don't focus on your recovery. So, People that are um, maybe grew up in a religious cult are like really likely to go hop into another one. And maybe the second one is not religious, but it's, a, you know, metaphysical or it's spiritual or it's just a narcissistic, not just, but it's a narcissistic um, relationship, one-on-one -on -one relationship. But it's like the same dynamic, the same um, patterns that... Uh, recreate themselves in your life if you don't actually focus on your recovery. So, um, and seeing a trauma-informed therapist, if someone you can find is um, experienced in cult recovery, great, but it's kind of hard to find those uh, people, you know, right now, there's not a lot of them. Um, second best would be someone who's trauma informed. So the dynamics are so similar and they, and if you don't have to do a lot of education for them about how cults work, that's really helpful because, you know, you, you might actually, you can just, if you find someone and you resonate with them, um, but they don't have a lot of the education there's, you can always give them, ask them to read a book or something, um, about it before you see them so that you're not having to spend your money to really like educate your therapist. Um, cause that can be frustrating. Right. So, um, so seeing a really good therapist, um, it's pretty scary for me to see not just un trained professionals, but cult leaders doing classes on ab abuse. Um, it's very, um, it's kind of like making me nauseous just to talk about it because I just feel so nervous about the people that are going to go there and what they're going to do to them. Um, they're not, so let me just put it in the, in the form of a question. Um, look at the credentials that the person has who's doing the work on the um, abuse class or whatever. Um, also consider not doing a group experience for something like this because it's very, there's just a lot of issues that come up in a group. This dynamic where you are supposed to like talk about something extremely vulnerable in front of not just one person who's actually trained and can be that space with you that is actually going to allow you to heal it. But there's like all these other people. It can be really re-traumatizing to put yourself in that position. So um, look at the credentials, the licensure, what experience, what um, level of, of expertise does this person have, if any, to be talking about or teaching you or helping you heal from something. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other bodies of work and methods and modalities that are not traditional therapy that are also good. Um, where I am at in my re recovery, I, I'm like allergic to all of that. I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> just me personally. I'm just like, nope, sorry, too culty. I don't want it. You know, um, although 
I was an acupuncturist before I joined this cult and I did study obviously Eastern medicine and I'm not, I have nothing against that. And I think it's completely valid and helpful. It's just sort of like, that's another topic. I actually think it would probably be great to help, you know, uh, regulate your nervous system and things like that, but it's just a completely different thing than healing and recovering from issues of, uh, cultic groups and abusive relationships. So there is a piece to this, I believe, and what I've learned is understanding what was done to you and educating yourself because you can't bypass that and just be recovered. You have to actually, because otherwise you're not going to recognize it when you see it again. So another question that was sent in was about like, how do I make sure this doesn't happen to me again? Um, how to recognize when it's happening to you, how to see it's coming. So, you know, when to say no, and that's the education piece, because when you start to educate yourself, you will see it a mile away. I'm not saying that I'm bulletproof, but you can't pull this. The, I won't fall for this one again. That's for sure. And it's so similar. The dynamics are so very similar in all of these groups. The content's different. What they're selling is different but the tactics are all the same. And so once you learn them and you see uh, in an unrelated group to your group, you see this same pattern and then you see, oh, this is how it applies to my group. And this is, you know, you start to recognize it. And that is the um, real true protection for, for you having this happen again is really being aware of and educated and informed about how this stuff works. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to link to uh, a bunch of things in the notes that you guys can go and um, read, listen to, educate, and um, learn about on your own. And uh, it, I think it also takes quite a long, like it can take quite a long time. Um, I think it's getting faster because there's less of a stigma now than there has been. There still is definitely a stigma, but there's less and there's more support and there's more people. Like I, I was talking to a good friend of mine who got out of this same cult I was in for 12 years. She was only in for one year. So she's been out for like, you know, 10 years or something. And, um, she didn't have any of this when she got out. And so her recovery was, took a lot, lot, lot longer because she was like the only one. And so when you're the only one, you feel like it's just you. And at this point in time, we're very lucky to have lots of information, documentaries, podcast books, um, where you can read about experiences of people that you will find one that resonates with you where you're like, wow, that, you know, and you see it in yourself. And so you feel like you're not alone. Um, also, Yanya Lalich's Center for Cult Recovery, there are group um, sessions and things that they have where you can meet with other survivors, which is really, really helpful. So similar to AA, where you have like sponsors and you kind of help each other and there's not like one leader in front and any of that culty stuff. It's more of a um, sort of help each other out kind of thing. So I think that's, that can be really helpful and yeah, hope this helps.